The book of Second Kings, we come to Second Kings chapter 20. And Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. We're looking at the reign of good king Hezekiah. And it says in verse 1, In those days Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you will die. You will not recover. Now, if Hezekiah was wondering how serious his illness was, he now knows it is terminal. In verse 2, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. He evidently turned away from Isaiah, didn't want anybody to see. Hezekiah served God. He was ready to go, spiritually speaking, but he still did not want to go. Death is horrible for the unsaved. It is a great improvement for the saved, but in spite of that, there may still be a fear of the death experience. It's just something we've never done before, and there are so many mysteries involved in it. And, well, you know what it is. It's just not something that anybody looks forward to and unless they're really, you know, hurting in this world, probably. Verse 3, Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion, and have done what is good in your eyes, and Hezekiah wept bitterly. The Hebrews associated long life with holiness. That's why Hezekiah can't figure out why it's time for him to go. I mean, he has tried to live for God. He has done good things, and yet he's going to die so soon for before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. God instantly heard Hezekiah's prayer. And he gave the answer to his prayer to Isaiah the prophet. Stop the prophet dead in his tracks as he was leaving the palace. Gave him the answer. Verse 5. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. And so, the tears of Hezekiah got to God. The Lord of the universe is a soft-hearted God. Verse 6 says, I will add 15 years to your life, and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant, David. There had been a lot of wickedness in Judah before good king Hezekiah started his reforms. He worked very hard to bring the nation back to God. And it looks as if God was going to use Assyria to punish his people and was going to take Hezekiah home early so he wouldn't see it. But instead, God changed his mind. He decided to spare Hezekiah and also spare Jerusalem. Verse 7, Then Isaiah said, Prepare a poultice of figs. They did so, and applied it to the boil, and he recovered. And the figs did not cure Hezekiah's deadly disease. God did. Applying the figs was an act of obedience that would activate God's gift of healing. Verse 8. Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, What will be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? Prophet, prophets often gave signs that their message from God would come to pass. That is very typical of a biblical prophecy. And that is something that is missing totally 
from the so-called prophets of today. It is so easy for these guys on TV or whatever in many churches to say, Thus saith the Lord, this and this and this. Never, ever once, and I've been in the presence of probably hundreds of them, never, ever once did any of them ever give a miraculous sign that they were indeed speaking from God. It's a bunch of phoniness. Verse 9. Isaiah answered, This is the Lord's sign to you, that the Lord will do what He has promised. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps, or shall it go back ten steps? Now, look at verse 10. It is a simple matter for the shadow to go forward ten steps, said Hezekiah. Rather, have it go back ten steps. Now, in the natural course of things, the, the sun moves forward. So, that wouldn't be a miracle. But backwards? Look at verse 11. Then the prophet Isaiah called upon the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back the ten steps that had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. Now, that's what I call a sign. The shadow of the sundial went back the equivalent of five hours. God evidently reversed the spin of the earth. The sun appeared to move backwards to where it had been five hours earlier. Now that's a prophecy you can believe. Something has been proved by a sign like that. Verse 12. At that time, Merodach, Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. Kind of strange that the king of Babylon would hear all the way, you know, from where he was living about the sickness of Hezekiah. And it was also kind of strange that the king of Babylon would send godly king Hezekiah of Judah get well wishes. 13. Hezekiah received the messengers and showed them all that was in his storehouses the silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine oil, his armory, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Hezekiah committed the sin of pride. In essence, he is bragging on himself as he shows off all the wealth and the fancy, fancy things in Judah to these Babylonians of all people to these Babylonians ungodly people who have visited him 14 then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked what did those men say and where did they come from from a distant land Hezekiah replied they came from Babylon and as we will see God sent the prophet to King Hezekiah and he will tell the king that what he has done is a very foolish thing. Pride often causes people to act foolishly. Verse 15. The prophet asked, What did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Normally a king would not show the leaders of another country where all the wealth of his land was stored. But that is what he did. And normally a king would not do that. And that's especially if true, true if the nation was a godless one like Babylon. And just look at why this was not smart. Verse 16. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all your fathers and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. That's why that was so stupid showing the treasures of Judah to godless Babylon was sort of like dangling a bone in front of a hungry dog. It's only a matter of time now before Babylon attacks in order to get all these riches. 18. And the, the prophet says this to the king, And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood that would be born to you, will be taken away. And they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. What terrible consequences for normally good King Hezekiah and his sinful pride. Verse 19. The word of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied, for he thought, I will, 
I, well, he says, for he thought, will, will there not be peace and security in my lifetime? Unbelievable. God has announced the terrible consequences of Hezekiah's sin. Consequences on future generations of Israelites, including his own family. Hezekiah's response, well, I'm glad it won't happen in my lifetime. Praise the Lord. Boy, that was close. I thought it was going to be bad news. How selfish. 20. As for the other events of Hezekiah's reign, all his achievements, and how he made the pool and the tunnel by which he brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Hezekiah wrestled with his fathers, and Manasseh his son succeeded him as king, and Hezekiah built a conduit 1,708 feet long to run water from a spring outside the walls of Jerusalem into the city. And it's quite a quite a uh, engineering achievement. And you know, when a, when a nation is godly and they're living the way God wants them to, and God blesses them. And they can usually make uh, scientific strides forward and, and other sorts of things. Engineering advances as well. God blesses godly people. Next time we pick up our study in chapter 21.